Brothers and sisters in Islam, injustice and oppression is one of the most serious sins which Allah Azza wa Jal will not leave unattended. It will be settled both in this life and in the hereafter. In the Musnad of Al Imam Ahmad, and it was classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet ﷺ was walking with Abu, with Abu Dhar when he saw two rams butting heads. He looked or turned to Abu Dhar and said, Oh Abu Dhar, do you know why they're fighting? He said, no. He said, but Allah does, and he will judge between them. Allahu Akbar. If settlement is going to be made amongst animals, how would the case be with regards to humans? Injustice and oppression is a sin for which Allah Azza wa Jal set punishment in this life and in the hereafter. In the book of Al Imam Ahmad, and it's classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet وسلم, said, There is no sin more deserving. For Allah Azza wa Jal to hasten its punishment for the one who commits it in this life, in addition to the punishment he has for him in the hereafter, than injustice and severing ties with kinfolks. It is so serious. And to reflect how serious it is, Allah Azza wa Jal says, in the Qudsi narration, which is reported by Muslim, Ya ibadi inni haramtu zulma ala nafsi. O my slaves, I have made injustice, forbidding for myself. Wa haramtuhu alaykum. And I made it forbidding for you. So do not be unjust to one another. Do not oppress one another. Injustice and oppression can be practiced against one's own self or others. And against one's own self, there are two levels. The most destructive of which, the most serious of which, is oppressing oneself by disbelief and associating with Allah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and this is reported by Muslim and Al-Bukhari, said, when Allah Azza wa Jal revealed, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِغُلْمُ Those who have believed and did not mix with their belief in justice, the companions found this to be very difficult because they understood it in a certain way. And they said to the Prophet ﷺ, who amongst us would not be unjust? In other words, we're humans, we will make this mistake. He said, it's not as you understand it. It is rather like the saying of Luqman to his son, Ya Bunayya la tushrik billah, inna shirka la zulmun azim. Oh my son, do not associate with Allah. Do not practice shirk, for indeed shirk is a great injustice. Now this is, as I said, the most destructive type of oppression and injustice which if a person dies upon, will be eternal in hellfire. And he is cursed by Allah, as Allah says, Ala la'natullahi ala al-zalimeen. Indeed, the curse of Allah is upon the unjust. 
Now the lower level of oppression against one's own self is when he commits sins. And this is what the companions understood from the verse. Now this is subject to the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. If he so wills, he will forgive. As in the book of an Imam Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will bring the slave on the day of judgment near. And then starts enumerating his sins and make him confess and admit to his guilt until the slave becomes certain that he's ruined, he's punished, he's doomed. Allah will then tell him, I have concealed them for you in this life. I did not expose you. And I will forgive them for you today. We ask Allah's forgiveness and pardon. Allahumma amin. And if he so wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will punish people for this type of injustice. Now, these two categories or two, two levels are within the first category or type, which is injustice or oppression against one's own self. Now, the second type is a more serious type. It is oppressing and being unjust towards others because this does not disappear, is not waived until and unless the slaves, the slave asks forgiveness from the one whom he wronged, the one whom he oppressed, and he forgives him or her. Or else the consequence is serious. In the book of an Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ was with the companions one day and he said, Who is a bankrupt person? They said a bankrupt person is the one who doesn't have any money or any belongings. He doesn't possess anything. He said, no. That's not it. Because their definition was in terms of this dunya. And it's correct in that, in that regard. But the Prophet ﷺ was teaching. He said, a bankrupt from my ummah is a person who would come on the day of judgment having performed prayer, siyam, fasting, and paid his zakah, but also had slandered this person, cursed that person, shed the blood of that person, and beat another. And then each will start taking from his good deeds to settle the matter. As we said, this will be attended, it will be settled, and this is how it is settled. The Prophet ﷺ said, each will take from his good deeds, from his hasanat, until they finish. And if they're finished, his hasanat, his good deeds, but he had not yet settled all matters with people, then their sins will be taken from them and they will be thrown on him and then he will be thrown in the fire of hell. This is serious. So we need to be careful how we deal with one another. Now this takes different forms in this life. In matters related to money, for example, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Muslim. He said, Delay in repayment of debts for a person who can is injustice. So you borrow money and the time becomes due to pay it back. And you have that money and you just keep delaying it. You're doing oppression. You're oppressing the person and doing injustice to him or her. Can one oppress his parents? 
his wife, his children, indeed he can. And it's done a lot. Undutifulness to parents is one of the most heinous major sins. And it's one of the forms of zulm, of injustice towards parents. Parents who taught us how to speak and how to walk and how to eat and how to brush our teeth and how to clean ourselves. When we grow up and we start feeling that we are men or women, oh, they're old-fashioned. They're an old style. They're this, oh, you, mom, you don't know. Things have changed, you don't know. And trying to prove your mom and your dad wrong all the time and that you know better than them. This is uquq and this is zulm. The other way around, children. One of the most common acts of zulm towards your children is not to upbring them according to Islam. Those who favor placing their children in non-Muslim schools under the pretext of better education. And then children deviate both morally and with creed. And then when they come and complain, so why did you do that? Oh, it's better education, brother. Well, pay the consequence of your zulm. Deal with your children now. Oppression against spouses. Husbands who deprive their wives from spending on them. Or unjustly taking their wealth. Or beating them, bad-mouthing them, ill-treating them. Women, that's all forms of zulm, of injustice and oppression, which we will be held accountable for, for Allah Azza wa Jal. So be ready. Wives, disobedience to husbands, being ungrateful, that's zulm. Husbands, you see your wife walking out without proper hijab, and I don't mean covering the hair. In our own mean covering the flesh. I mean proper hijab according to Islamic terminology, not nowadays terminology. You see your wife wearing makeup and putting perfume and walking out of the door, and it's like it's something that does not interest you. That's thrown to your wife. We need to be fair. Another form is attributing something ill about a person falsely. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Imam Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, anyone who falsely accuses a believer of something that is not true, that is not in him or her, Allah will imprison him in the pus and sweat drippings of the people of hell until or unless he repents and uh, seeks pardon of the person he oppressed. We need to be careful. And these are only examples. The list goes on. And we know what's right and what's wrong. But these were just few examples. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us be, to be just to ourselves and to others. ma tasma'una wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We need to remember when we're about to wrong someone, when we're about to be unjust towards someone, that an oppressed person has 
an accepted supplication which will be honored by Allah Azza wa Jal. In the book of an Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet وسلم, said, There are three types of people whose supplications will not be rejected. Allah, Allah will answer them. He continues to say, The gates of the heavens will open and their supplication will uh, ascend. And Allah will say, Our Lord will say, By my might, I will support you. I will give you victory against those who wronged you, oppressed you, and were unjust towards you, even if it's after a while. So be careful. The Prophet ﷺ said, Da'watul Mazlum, the supplication of an, of an oppressed, has nothing blocking it from Allah. So be careful. Al Imam al Dhahabi, in his famous book Al Kaba'ir, reported the following story. He said one day there was a, a poor person whose sustenance is by fishing and bringing the, whatever he catches and sells it and then brings the needs of his family or his household with that money. One day he was walking uh, back home after having fished a large fish. And a tyrant saw him. And he was impressed by the size of the fish. So he stopped him. He said, give me this fish. He said, by Allah, he will not give it to you. This is the means of providing for my family. I will not give it to you. So he beat him. He kicked him. And he grabbed hold of that fish, fresh, out of water. The man rejoiced for the size. He has something for his family. And that man oppressed him, was unjust to him. He unlawfully possessed his wealth and transgressed the limits by beating him up. So the poor man started crying, and that man started walking off with the fish, and the fish bit his tongue. It was very painful. He didn't give it thought, and he went home. A day or two later, became very painful, so he went to see the doctor. He said it has gangrene. We have to cut it off before it spreads to the palm. So they did. He went back home. A while, back, a while later, the palm became very painful. Suffering increased. He couldn't tolerate it. He, go, he goes to the doctor and he tells him, he said, ah, well, gangrene spread from the thumb to it. We got to cut it from here before it spreads to your arm. So they cut it. He goes home, a while later, pain starts, becomes severe, he goes back to the doctor, the same thing, they cut it from the elbow before it reaches the shoulder, goes back home, a while later, the same thing repeats here, and then he goes to the doctor, and they cut his arm from the shoulder joint. There are two narrations. One narration said it started by saying this man was walking in the market and saying whoever sees me, let him not oppress anyone. And another narration says the doctor said, what have you done? This is not normal. He said, I did this, this, this and that. He said, my advice to you is to go and look for that man and ask pardon from him. Because you've wronged him, you've oppressed him, you were very unjust to him. So the man said, I went around, started looking in the village for that man until I, I found him 
I went back, I went down to his, to his feet and started crying and saying, please forgive me for what I have done. It was a, a while from that incident, so the man said, who are you? He said, don't you recognize me? He said, no. He said, I am the one who did this, this and that to you. The man started crying, that poor man. That tyrant said to him, I ask you by Allah, did you supplicate against me? He said, yes. When you did what you did, and you left me and went with nothing for my family, I raised my hands and, and said, Oh Allah, He showed me His strength. Show me your strength against Him. So, this is what I said. He said, Allah did. Please forgive me. And from that time on, he would walk in the market and say, O oh people, whoever sees me, let him not ever oppress anyone. Let him not be unjust to anyone. We will be paying the consequence. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet wasallam said, anyone who wrongs, Another person transgresses the limits, oppresses his brother, his fellow Muslim with regards to his honor or any, if anything else. Then let him seek pardon from him. Let him go and ask forgiveness from him before a time will come when settling matters is not by means of dinar or dirham. It's not in money. If he has good deeds, it will be taken from him to settle his problem. And when that vanishes, when that ends, their bad deeds will be placed on him. So let us hasten. Let us settle our accounts with those whom we know very well. See, we know when we wrong others. Let us settle our accounts. You're vicious with your father and mother. Go kiss their feet and ask their pardon. You wronged your wife. Take a nice present and ask her to forgive you. You disobey your husband. Stop and promise, promise him you will not do it again and ask his forgiveness. You're wronging your wife by leaving her go in and out without hijab. Start now. Start with your daughter. Start with your sister if she's under your guardianship. Your children need to be raised according to Islam before they became, become a curse on you in this life, before the hereafter. We ask Allah's assistance in settling accounts in this life before it is settled in the hereafter. O oh Allah, forgive our sins, pardon us. And expiate all our sins. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma aghfir warham. Wa tajawaz amma ta'lam. Inna ka anta al-a'azzu al-akram. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-thabata fi al-amr. Wa al-azimata ala al-rushd. Allahumma inna nas'aluka mujibati rahmatik. Wa azaima maghfiratik.